This is Doug Varnberg and welcome back to another set of tips and tricks. Today we've got our Hummingbird Helix and we're going to hook it up to NEMA 2000 where we can actually show our motor information on our unit. Uh, I'm going to show you how to hook it up. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need a new NEMA 2K uh, basically backbone kit. There's a lot of different suppliers. If you search the internet you'll find different ones. Uh, this is, I think, what they call the micro cable. Uh, going to have T's, you're going to have a cable, you're going to have a power supply, and you're going to have basically in, basically ends. Uh, if you have any opens, you have to put a terminator. Terminator is what they call these, male and females. Um, you're going to hook your cables up, and I will just show you quickly. This is a little short one, going to make it easier. Um, but you'll have an interface from your outboard. Um, you'll actually connect these ends, screw them together. Uh, if you're going to go to the unit, you can actually tap into right into the T there. There's one way of doing it. Or you can put a little short extension like this. You'll need enough cable to come from your batteries because you, you will need to power this. And I would highly recommend putting that on switch power. You're going to get a power cable as part of your NEMA 2000 starter pack. Uh, but that's what you need to get your motor data to your Humminbird Helix. Uh, we'll jump in here. I'll show you how to connect it up. And uh, we'll get it fired up on the unit. But it, uh, it's an easy way. Uh, to show you. It may be something you're interested in, some people may not. Uh, you're going to utilize your whole unit to read your engine data, but it's something that's cool. Um, if you're running down the lake, you can monitor or going a long ways. You can see a lot more than just your normal gauges and you don't have to look at them. So, running multiple units, it may be something that you're wanting to consider. Humminbird, what you will need is the NEMA 2000 backbone if you're running a Humminbird Helix or the core series which is your 8, 9, 1100 series units you will need the black box from Humminbird which is going to be this piece. If you're running a single unit you will also need a Ethernet adapter cable the ASEC QDE that will allow it to plug into the back of the unit if you have a Humminbird Ethernet network is the way I'm going to be installing this where I have multiple helixes on that we're going to tie this in directly to our Ethernet switch box. Ethernet will share it to the unit. And I'll show you how that's done. You need to get you a NEMA 2000 starter kit. And you will need the proper interface to match to your outboard motor. Let's jump in here and I'll show you how it's done. What I've got is my NEMA 2000 cable is right here for my starter backbone. What I have done is I've attached the two foot lead to one of the, the T, T connectors. Then you'll have to match your male and female pins. We got pins there, we got a female here, and there is a notch there that's going to allow them to go together. Then you'll need to tighten that up. If this is the end of it, you'll use a terminator on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this cable up into my console where my Ethernet box is to connect to the Humminbird NEMA, NEMA black box for the Humminbird Helix. Right down there is our Ethernet box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this black box to that Ethernet, one of the Ethernet ports to share on all of my Humminbirds. This, uh, this in here is an Ethernet connection and will hook to this box. Once I have that connected, I'm going to connect my Ethernet cable. Find it here. There's my Ethernet cable. I'm going to connect it, and there is always a notch. And that's going to connect my 
Hummingbird AS ETH NEMA 2K black box for my Hummingbird Helix. So we'll hook that up. I'm just going to set that back in there. And we'll get over here. We'll get over here and show you how it operates on the Hummingbird Helix. I'm just going to turn down this just a little bit because it'll probably make it easier to see for video. But push and hold your view button. You'll see the different view, the views. Sonar chart system NEMA 2000. We're going to NEMA 2000. You have the data box view, the gauge view, a one engine or a two engine view. We're going to go to the single engine and this is our NEMA 2000. You can actually see we're reading engine temperature right now. Um, not going to be able to make it out on the water because it is flat raining and cold here in Missouri in December and I don't feel like getting soaked here. But uh, you'll be able to see your tack, your fuel, there's air temperature, there's speed over ground, course over ground, this is uh, speed through water. Um, seeing the network stuff popping up since we just fired this up. But you'll be able to see this on all your networked units. A um, couple quick things. Uh, you can come over here. Uh, network source setup. If you're running an external GPS receiver, you'll need to set that up there. Come back up here to accessories. Here's your 2000 gateway. If you have other sensors and that type of stuff that's hooked up to your to your NEMA 2000 network, you can select them here. Uh, if you've got two engines, there's your fuel sensors, uh, depth, uh, altitude, heading, air temperature, water temperature, humidity, pressure, speed through water, wind. Uh, all those sensors are available to add to your NEMA 2000 network. Um, you also want to come over here under setup and make sure you're in an advanced user mode. Volume you want in whatever gallons or liters or that stuff. You'll need to make sure you got your unit set up. NUMA 2000 pressures, um, PSI, fuel used. If you're using a fuel, you can reset your fuel sensor. Uh, restore defaults, digital readouts, select readouts. That's one that we want here. This is showing your gauge cluster. And this is where you can change the different readouts of the different data that you want. You got eight different sources there that you can show readouts. Um, for example, uh, we can see seven down here is course over ground. Um, you can do speed. You can set different press, different systems there. That's all user customizable. Uh, your data offsets for NEMA 2000. Uh, your time zone, daylight savings is right there. Actually, we can turn that off. There's your NEMA talker. I'm leaving that. And that's pretty much all the setup parts over there. But uh, you'll definitely want to get in there and change some of those. You may want to change some of your reviews. But there's your NEMA 2000 gauge that we can uh, customize. Through hidden menu you can get there. Um, there is a whole lot of different alarms with NEMA 2000. You can set depth, environment, and engine alarms. This may be something that you want to look at because you can do low uh, overheat sensor, overheat alarms, engine alarms. Um, if you got the four strokes, the oil pressure and oil levels, fuel pressure, uh, system voltage charge. Uh, there's a lot of different alarms you can set to monitor your engine. Um, all available in the Hummingbird. You basically got three different views. This is your single view. If you hit exit or view, you're going to go page forward, page back. This is the double row gauges with the big sensors on the side. 
And then you go X, well, there's just numbers. So those are the three different views that you can use in combination with your NEMA 2000 on your Humminbird. Hopefully we'll be able to get out on the water soon and I can get you some data from what it looks like on the water. But I uh, wanted to get this in to show you how to set up a Humminbird NEMA 2000 network. Check it out. It's a neat addition. The only disadvantage I see with NEMA 2000 is it's going to take up the whole screen. But that's one of the cool things with the Humminbird Helix. I've actually got it set up down here as a shortcut. If I want to go mapping, bing right there. If I want to go sonar of my three favorite presets. You can set this up as a preset. The NEMA 2000 screen will need to be the power on the outboard for it to display. So that is one thing to take in consideration. I hope that helped you learn how to connect the NEMA 2000 to your Humminbird Helix Series units or Core Series units. You'll need a NEMA backbone, an interface cable to your outboard, the NEMA 2000 black box for your Humminbird Helix Series units. It's a neat feature, it's another addition, things that you can do with your Humminbird unit to help you get more and enjoy more on the water. Thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks and tune in next time as we go more in depth. Actually in the next series we're going to hook up a Solix or Onyx series unit to show you how that works. Thank you and have a great day.